the bigger the battle, the bigger the glory to God. If you're to look back at your own life, there have been so many battles that you've won, not in your own power, not in your own might, but by the power of the living God who lives in you. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome to For His Glory podcast. If it's your first time, welcome. And if you're a returning subscriber, listener, I'm delighted to have you. If you've just come across my videos, my name is Faith. I'm a mom of two. I'm a scientist, biotechnologist by profession, but I'm a girl who loves Jesus. So I started For His Glory podcast to share more about Jesus and make his name known. In this episode, I'm going to share with you an encouragement. This month has been about encouraging you and helping you thrive in your day-to-day -day life. In our conversation today, we're going to talk about the story of David, purposely to talk about how David was able to win amidst all the challenges he faced. And the goal of this episode is to encourage you to keep the good fight. Without further ado, let's get right into this episode. Before I start an episode, I will say a prayer, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for today. I thank you so much for the gift of life. I thank you so much for the ability to share your word. I come before you this morning and I ask you to speak through me. May you articulate the word that you put on my heart to share to the best of my ability. And may I decrease, may you increase. Holy Spirit, I welcome you in each and everyone's heart who is watching this video. May you help them understand this word because you're the teacher who teaches us all things. May you help us move in alignment to your will. May you encourage us, may you comfort us, may you show yourself strong in our lives. I welcome you and I give you praise. In Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. So, David. Who is David? David was one of the sons of Jesse. David was the last born and the story as it unfolds in 1 Samuel to 2 Samuel, you'll see that David was not liked by his brothers. He was the last born of the many brothers he had and all these brothers didn't look at him as someone who was to be held with regard. They treated him badly despite the fact that he was their blood born brother. And from the description of David, we get to understand that David was a bit of a small stature, so he was not regarded as anything by his brothers and also his father. We see an instance where prophet Samuel goes to Jesse's house looking for who God had chosen to anoint as the next king of Israel. The Israelites had asked for themselves a king and God had given them Saul. Despite the fact that God had been the king of Israel all this time, the Israelites were like, no, we need to have someone to lead us, someone to be our king. So God was like, okay, let me get your king. So he gets them Saul. When he gets them Saul, Saul comes into reign. But Saul at some point of his reign, he disobeys God's command. A word was given to him and he disobeyed that word. So he did something that was contrary to what God wanted him to do. And we also see that God ends up telling him obedience is better than sacrifice. So God rejects Saul and decides to choose himself someone else who he can anoint to be king. This is the instance where we see prophet Samuel going to Jesse's house looking for one of the sons of Jesse to anoint them as king. What Jesse does, he brings all his sons, the tall sons, the huge sons, the guys who looked that they had what it took to be a king. But every time he brought out one, God tells Samuel, the prophet, that's not the one I've chosen. At some point, prophet Samuel asks, don't you have anyone else left? And Jesse's like, oh yeah, I have someone left. His name is David. He's my least, he's my youngest. And where is he? He's tending to my sheep in the fields. So prophet Samuel says, I'll not wait. I'll not sit. Let David come here. And as soon as David came to meet prophet Samuel, the spirit of God spoke to prophet Samuel and told him, this is the one I've chosen. This is the man I've chosen after my own heart. So he ends up getting the oil and anoints him to be the next king. This anointing happens. And as a person who knows about anointing, you would think that as soon as they've anointed him, he will be king, let's say, next month or three months or six months. No. It took him approximately 15 years for him to become a king. And during this time, 
he had to face a lot of things. So today we are going to digest this story of David and learn from David how to keep up a good fight. In life, there's so many things that are going to push us to the limits, even when you're called by God. Your calling is not going to be today and the next day you're on the forefront doing the work of God. You have to go through that period of preparation, the period of refinement, the period of testations, as they like to call it, or temptations, whereby you'll be tested to be found fit for the work that God is calling you to do. So many of the times what happens to us in this period, we tend to give up. We tend to think that God is not on our side. We tend to doubt the promise and the word that has been spoken over our lives. Today I'm here to encourage you to keep up the good fight. I'm here to encourage you to win amidst the challenges you're going to face as you step into your calling. So after David had been anointed by prophet Samuel, he gains favor before King Saul and Saul takes him over in his palace to work for him. He was serving Saul during this time, despite him knowing that he's going to be the king, he's going to be the next king. David knows that God has chosen him to be the king of Israel, but he's serving the current king of Israel. How humble was David? One thing that you have to understand when you have a calling on your life, sometimes God is going to put you in places whereby he will test your heart. He will test how you think. He will test how humble you are. He might take you in a place whereby the work you're doing is even beneath what you have, is beneath your qualifications, is beneath the things that you need to be doing based on the calling that has been put on you. But the heart that you need to keep in this place is you have to have a heart of service. You have to be humble enough to know that you have to go through this training. You have to go through this testament for you to step into your purpose. So we see that in the book of First Samuel, chapter 16, from verse 14. So it says, Now the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. So attendants said to him, See an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command his servant here to search for someone who can play the lyre. He will play when the evil spirit from the Lord comes on you and you'll feel better. So Saul said to his attendants, find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He's a brave man and a warrior. He speaks well and is a fine looking man and the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent his messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the ship. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a young goat, and sent them with his son David to Saul. David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul liked him very much, and David became one of his armor bearers. Then Saul sent a word to Jesse, saying, Allow David to remain in my service, for I am pleased with him. Whenever the Spirit of God came on Saul, David would take up the lyre and play. The relief would come to Saul and he would feel better and the evil spirit would leave him. So we've seen that David has already been anointed, but David has been brought in to serve Saul. He's serving Saul with humility. He's serving Saul with all his heart and he's doing the work that Saul has commanded him to do. One thing that this made me think about is Many times you might end up serving the people who you're going to replace. I've experienced this in my own career, whereby I was put into a place where I had to serve the person whose position I would end up taking. At that point, I didn't even know the position of that person would be mine after a while, but I was serving them with this heart of like, oh yeah, I need to learn from you. Let me learn as much as I can learn from you. Let me serve you with all my heart to make sure that I gain the expertise, the knowledge I need to do my job. And lo and behold, after a while, this person quits the job and I'm put into position to lead this job. So that can also happen on your calling. Do not undermine the people that you're serving. God is going to look at your heart. As it's also said in the book of Samuel, First Samuel 16 verse 7, it said, The Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outside appearance, but the Lord looks at your heart. So every time that God has called you to do something, it's about your heart. Your heart. Your heart. Your heart. When I started this podcast, I wanted it to get to many people. I would share it on my profile. I still share it on my WhatsApp profile. I share it on my Instagram. 
and at some point I wanted to make sure that my videos are being watched especially of the podcast because I'm spreading the word of God but when I looked at my conviction down at my heart I wanted this to reach many people but the goal of me seeing this podcast reach many people was not solely to God was me to find that validation that what I was doing was right until God rebuked me and told me all you have to do is to share my word just share it whoever finds it will find it do not try to help me in pushing this podcast to other people let me do the work my thought was when I push this podcast it will get many people and I'll get more subscribers to the YouTube channel and I'll end up getting a community that can sell to my services like it wasn't a pure motive until I went to God and told him you know what I'm doing this podcast for you I'll keep sharing it on my status but I'm not going to put my heart before your word your word comes first then my heart and my aspirations and my desires will come second and I've seen that it's growing slowly but it's bringing me the people that God wants to bring to my podcast that God wants to bring to my YouTube so each time that you're doing something especially when it's aligning to your calling try to ask yourself does this thing benefit me or is it benefiting God first before it can benefit me it's written that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the rest shall be added unto you so I had to come to terms I'm like seeking first the kingdom of God is going to come down to me doing what God has called me to do regardless of whether I see the results today regardless of whether I see the fruit today as long as I'm doing that thing that God has called me to do the rest that I need my validation my vindication will come from him he will reward the works of my heart he will reward the things I do in secret he would reward what I'm doing so it comes down to your heart examine your heart anything that you're doing examine the intention behind the intention what's the intention behind the intention of what you're doing is it to serve yourself is it to serve the kingdom of God so when you go into first Samuel chapter 17 we see that Israel has an eminent enemy that they need to defeat this enemy is a Philistine he's recorded to be over nine feet tall and huge and Saul is perplexed wondering how are we going to be able to defeat this Philistine but David comes out and says I'll do it what struck me when I was studying this chapter was that David comes in Saul offers him his armor he's like okay since you've decided to be the man at the front put on my armor David tries on the armor and he's like you know what ah, this is so heavy I've not practiced in it and I don't feel comfortable wearing it I'll go as I am at the back of my mind I'm thinking okay I think Saul believed that David would die this day because David doesn't go with anything you only have a sling a few stones and himself and also the word and the covenant he believed over his life he was already anointed to be king and now he's facing a battle to kill a man who is jeopardizing the Israelites who is standing to defame the name of Israel the name of the Most High God so David had God with him to fight this battle David had said that when he kills Goliath he will not only cut off his head but he will also take all his swords all his armory and take it as a sign of victory and I'm thinking also Goliath was like who is this short dude coming to show me that he can do anything but as the Spirit of God was with David David defeated Goliath when Goliath is down David cuts off his head takes his swords and runs and takes his swords into his tent David kills Goliath without Saul knowing who David was he didn't even know that David was the son of Jesse after Saul learns about David killing Goliath he asks his commander whose son is this and the commander of the army whose name was Abner says I don't even know whose son is but after David had killed Goliath he goes in to meet Saul and he tells Saul I am the son of your servant Jesse of Bethlehem this can also be a podcast on its own sometimes the things you're going to do in life people won't know who you are but what God has put on your heart is going to open room for you 
this confirms that many of the times the things you're going to do are going to be things that people won't know you for. But because you've been anointed by God, that anointing is going to open for you doors in which you're going to move in. That anointing is going to speak before you can speak. God is going to vindicate you before anyone else can vindicate you. God is going to validate your work before anyone else can validate your work. So do not look at the outside environment. Do not look at what people are saying about you. Do not look at who knows me. Do not look at which door am I entering in. Do not look at anything outside besides the calling that God has put on your life. Your calling is going to be that gift that is going to open for you doors in places that you've not been. I've seen this in my own life. If I tell you where I come from, if I tell you which family I come from, if I tell you that at some point in my life my parents had to struggle to find my tuition, some days I'd be chased from school because my parents didn't have the money to pay the school fees. But the things that God has helped me achieve in my life have not been in my own power. They've not been in my own might, but they've been because of the calling he put over my life. They've been because of that power of the living God that I serve. So this is an encouragement to someone out there who feels that your life is not going the way it should go, who feels you're stuck, who feels that the battle before you is bigger than anything else that you can fight. Fight the good fight. Believe in the God who has called you to be who you are. Believe in the God who has helped you achieve the success you've achieved to get to this level. If you're to look back at your own life, there have been so many battles that you've won. Not in your own power, not in your own might, but by the power of the living God who lives in you. The breath of God that is in you has enabled you achieve the success you've achieved. The battles before you are there to test your belief in God. The battles before you are there to test if you could look at only God, the author and the finisher of your faith. Do not sway, do not doubt, do not think otherwise, but think that if God has carried me to where I am right now, what is this battle before me? What is this battle that is defying the God who I serve? What is the situation in my life that is defying the almighty God? So when you're coming at this battle, speak these words and say you come to this battle with God, with him, because the battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to God. The Bible says that be still and know that I'm God. Being still means that you surrender. Do not think left, do not think right. Stand and watch God fight for you. The promises of God for your life are yes and amen. It might be a diagnosis you have, it might be a loss of a job, it might be a loss of a relationship, it might be divorce, but know the word of God. Amidst what you're going through, God has a plan. For he knows the plan he has for your life. Plans to prosper you and not to bring you disaster plans to give you an expected end the caveat is have your expected end in mind what do you want God to do for you where do you want God to take you what is that vision on your life and watch it unfold because everything that you're going through works together for your good what the enemy means for harm God turns it into your good we see this from the story of Joseph Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers his brother thought that that was the end of Joseph. But in the end, Joseph ends up rescuing the entire country of Israel. He ends up gaining favor before Pharaoh. He ends up leading to them living in Egypt. He ends up providing food for them in the big famine that he was able to see and interpret in the dream of Pharaoh. So anything that is thrown at you, always look at it and say, what the enemy has meant for your detriment, God always turns it for your good. Look at Lazarus. I share this over and over again. When Lazarus died, it was four days until Jesus came and raised him from the dead. If Jesus had killed Lazarus when he was sick, that would have been a normal miracle because Jesus had healed so many people to that point. But Lazarus died. And when Lazarus died, what does Jesus tell Martha? This was meant to the glory of God. This had been planned to give God the glory. The bigger the battle, the bigger the glory to God. The bigger the battle, the bigger the praise that God receives. We are going to stop here for today. 
Before I conclude this episode, I'd like to say a prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this wonderful word I've shared with your people. I pray that it gets cemented in our hearts. May it grow and may it yield the fruit that you want it to yield. I pray for anyone out there who feels discouraged, who needs encouragement. May you meet them at their point of need. Anyone who is sick and is watching this episode, I release the power of healing over your life in Jesus' name. I pray that God will heal you and take away your infirmity in Jesus' name. If you're out there and you want to receive Christ as your personal Savior, please repeat this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to die for me on the cross. Jesus, thank you so much for taking my part and dying for me. You died and rose again for my glory. Today I confess of my sins and I ask you to come and dwell in my life. From today onwards, I am a born again Christian. The old is gone and the new has come. In Jesus' name, I do pray and believe. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. So if you've enjoyed it, please subscribe to the podcast. You can get it on Apple Podcasts and also Spotify. And if you've enjoyed the episode, please share it with someone else that is going to motivate. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. His name. So let go my soul and trust in him. The waves of me still know.